becomes the third NASA mission to send humans to the moon. Seeing the success of the last two missions, the astronauts in this rocket were very confident about their mission and their dream. Their dream to set foot on the moon. But at that time, they were unaware that their dream would never come true. In April 1970, when their spacecraft was about 330,000 kilometers away from the Earth, they heard a loud bang, a huge bang that shook the entire spacecraft. Within a few seconds, the warning lights and alarms start going on. It was found that one of the oxygen tanks had burst, and the other oxygen tank was leaking rapidly. The mission control on the ground couldn't believe it. They believed that the instruments were malfunctioning, but the astronauts in the spacecraft could see through the window that the air was leaking. On the other hand, they see that because of the blast, the spacecraft had shifted from its path so much that it was going kilometers away from the Earth every second. Within a few hours, the astronauts in Apollo 13 were so far away from the Earth that it became a new record. To date, no human has gone so far from the Earth as these three astronauts did during the Apollo 13 mission. Forget landing on the moon. The question back then was whether they could return to Earth alive. This is the distressing story of Apollo 13. Carbon dioxide levels in the lunar module are rising. Uh, the main heat shield was not designed to operate in free space for extended periods of time. The crew were beginning to suffer. It was a dire state. It was a real, real emergency situation. In 1961, American President John F. Kennedy promised the world that before the end of the decade, he would have humans on the moon. To achieving the goal, before this decade is out, of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. The design of Apollo 13 spacecraft was similar to that of the previous space missions. Mainly, there were four main components, command module, service module, lunar module, and launch escape system. The spacecraft was launched on a Saturn V rocket. All three astronauts were seated in the command module, which was the main part of the spacecraft, but it was a small part. The command module is just this cone shape, which is only 11 feet long, and has a diameter of 13 feet. All the instrument panels, navigation gear, radios, life support system, and small engines were all in this command module. The second most important part was the service module, which had most of the oxygen for the astronauts. It had some more engines too, and fuel cells to generate electricity. The command and service module they are connected during the entire mission until the astronauts return to Earth, and only during the re-entry to Earth are they separated from each other. The third part was the lunar module, which was actually supposed to land on the Moon, and once the work on Moon was over, it was supposed to get attached to the CSM module once again. The fourth part, the launch escape system, was not so important for the mission. Its only task was to protect the astronauts from an accident during the launch. It works like this. If there's an accident during the rocket launch and the rocket catches fire, it safely ejects the astronauts and takes them away from the accident. You can see in this video where this abort system was being tested. But if everything goes well in the launch, then the LES is not needed and it is ejected and thrown away. On 11th April 1970, since Apollo 13 launched safely and successfully, the LES was not needed. Three astronauts were on the spacecraft Commander Jim Lovell, the pilot of the lunar module, Fred Hayes, and the third pilot of the command module, Jack Swigert. The crew of these three astronauts takes off from the Earth. To see this rocket launch, there were around 200,000 spectators on the ground. This was a small number compared to the Apollo 11 liftoff the previous year. That had seven million spectators for the rocket launch. But if we talk about the mission, this spacecraft took off smoothly towards its destination. It was supposed to take three days for them to reach the Fra Maura crater of the moon. This is a big hole on the moon's surface. A crater which is believed to contain a lot of information not only about the moon, but also about the Earth. The biggest problem during the first two days of the flight was when astronaut Jack Swigert realized that he had forgotten to file his income tax return. He asked the mission control on Earth whether he could get an extension. Uh-oh, have you guys completed your income tax? <laughs> yeah, Joe, uh, uh, I gotta... That, that it, it's funny, it kinda, things kinda happen real fast down there, and I, I do need an extension. Uh, I didn't get mine filed. I really this conversation proves that everything was going right. During the first two days, there were no problems in the mission. At 46 hours, 
43 minutes of the mission. The capsule communicator on duty at that time said that the spacecraft was in a good shape and that they were bored sitting there. This is Apollo Control at 46 hours, 43 minutes. Scratch in real good shape as far as we're concerned. Yeah, we're bored to tears down here. The third day of the mission, 13th April, the crew is told that they have to do some tests on the lunar module. And apart from this, they have to do a broadcast for the television, where they will use the cameras to show the interiors of the command module and service module to the world. Now, the audience's interest in this was so low that no television network showed this broadcast at that time. Commander Lovell's wife went to the VIP section of the mission control to watch this broadcast. About six and a half minutes after the end of the TV broadcast, the flight controllers on the ground asked astronaut Swiger to check the oxygen level. There was nothing unusual in this. It was just a routine check of the oxygen tanks in the service module. And while this check was being done, suddenly, a huge explosion occurred. Many warning lights and alarms went off. As I told you at the beginning of the video, the astronauts in the spacecraft were largely in shock. Commander Lovell contacted Mission Control and said, Houston, we have had a problem. Okay, Houston, we've had a problem here. Come back in, please. Mm -hmm. Oh, Houston, we've had a problem. It turned out that one tank of oxygen was completely empty and the oxygen level in the other tank was going down rapidly. Mission control on the ground first thought that the instruments must be showing the wrong data, but that was the truth. Everyone needed to take action urgently if they wanted to save the lives of these astronauts. The TV channels that had called this mission boring and were not showing it on the news made this the news headline suddenly. Apollo 13 to the moon is in serious jeopardy this morning and is not going to make a moon landing. The oxygen tanks in the spacecraft were sphere-shaped. In these, oxygen was stored in liquid form. There was a heater at the center, which converted the liquid oxygen into gas. On Apollo 13, there were two such tanks in the service module. The tank number two was originally installed in Apollo 10, but was removed from there for modification. And a minor accident happened with it. It accidentally fell down during a repair and was damaged. The tube inside it was damaged, but no one saw it during the inspection. While testing it, People noticed that the tank would not be completely empty. To get rid of the remaining oxygen, heaters were used to boil it completely. Later, it was found that the thermometer inside it could show a maximum temperature of 30 degrees Celsius. But when the heater was used to heat the oxygen in the tank, the temperature would reach as high as 538 degrees Celsius. No one noticed this extreme heating because it did not register in the thermometer. Due to this extreme heating, the insulation of the electrical wires in the tank were damaged. Before the mission, NASA's managers and engineers had approved the tank after a thorough investigation, but they were unable to see the internal damage. And because of this, during the Apollo 13 mission, during the routine check of the tank on the third day, due to those electric wires, there was a spark and the tank explodes. It was only by chance that the tank was attached to the exterior of the spacecraft. Had it been attached inside the spacecraft and exploded there, then all the astronauts would have been killed instantly. But because it was on the outside, the explosion occurred outside, and only a 13-foot panel was damaged in the service module. What else was damaged in the spacecraft? The astronauts were not so sure. Now everyone had to make an important decision. Which way could they take to return to Earth? The fastest way to return to Earth was to rotate the spacecraft. But to do this, the main engine of the service module had to be started. The main engine was located near the blast in the CSM module. No one knew whether the engine was damaged or not. The second way to return to Earth was to go towards the moon and circle around the moon to return to the Earth. For this, the engine of the service module would not be required. But the risk was that it would take four to five days to return to Earth. Did the astronauts have enough oxygen and water left? NASA's flight director chose the second option, to take the long way back. The astronauts were told to shut down the CSM module immediately, and while returning, they were told to use the lunar module as a lifeboat. Though this decision was a safe option, it did have several problems. The lunar module was designed in such a way that only two astronauts could sit in it for about 20 hours. Because as I told you, its original purpose was to land on the moon and get attached to the CSM module again. But now it was expected that these three people would sit in the lunar module for four to five days. The engines of the lunar module 
were not designed in a way that they could be fired repeatedly. To a large extent, this was also a risky maneuver. To conserve supplies and energy, the astronauts were told to shut down all non-essential systems in the spacecraft, including the heaters that were installed. It was very important to save electricity. As per this plan, the astronauts sat in the lunar module, and for the first time, the engines of the lunar module were fired. When an engine is started, it is called a burn. So they do the first burn to get on the new path. With the help of this burn, they reached the other side of the moon, the far side of the moon. They became the first humans in the world to go so far from the Earth. And this record remains unbeatable even now. At their furthest point, they were 400,000 kilometers away from the Earth. If they stayed on this path, they could reach the Earth about 153 hours after launch. But this time margin was very risky. If they reached Earth after so long, then only one hour of surplus food, water and oxygen would remain for the astronauts. NASA team on the ground believed that this margin is very narrow. That's why the astronauts were told to burn the lunar module engine for the second time. The engineers in the mission control had done many calculations to find out whether the lunar module engine will be able to handle the second burn or not. These calculations proved correct when the second burn is done. The flight time of 153 hours was reduced to 143 hours, an 11 hour long margin of survival. Before the astronauts could relax, another problem arose, the high concentration of carbon dioxide. In spaceships, apart from oxygen tanks, there are canisters of lithium hydroxide to remove carbon dioxide. When astronauts breathe in oxygen, they breathe out carbon dioxide. If that carbon dioxide is not removed, it will result in a large amount of carbon dioxide, which can be problematic. That is why canisters of lithium hydroxide are used so that carbon dioxide reacts with it and becomes lithium carbonate. But the problem here was that the canisters of lithium hydroxide in the lunar module were enough for only two people to survive for two days. But here, there were three people who wanted to survive for four days. The good thing here was that there were some canisters in the command module too, but their filter was square and the ones in lunar module had a circular shape. The experts on the ground had 24 hours to solve this problem. Astronauts from the spacecraft communicated to tell them about all things present around them. Plastic bags, cardboard, some suit hoses, some duct tape, they wanted to create something that could be the solution to this problem. After a few hours of experimenting, they make a contraption to make this work. After giving step-by-step -step instructions, a new device was created with the things present there, with which the level of carbon dioxide decreases again. Commander Lovell in his book Lost Moon states that the contraption wasn't very handsome, but it worked. The thing they made looked like this. In this entire rescue mission, even the smallest details were taken care of. Astronauts were instructed not to drink more than 200 milliliters of water in a day, because if they drink more water, they will need to urinate. And in this way, the quantity of their urine could change the direction of the spaceship. That's why they needed to survive by drinking so little water. These three astronauts lost 14 kgs of weight in total. Astronaut Hayes gets a urinary tract infection. After four days, when Apollo 13 spacecraft reaches near Earth, astronauts realize that they need to burn once more. In their calculations, they hadn't taken into account the cooling vapor present in the spacecraft. This caused the spacecraft to wander off the track. Commander Lovell carried out another burn of the lunar module, which brings the spacecraft back on track. Thankfully, the spacecraft could withstand the third burn too, even though this lunar module was designed to withstand only one burn. The whole world was holding their breaths and watching the news channels and were waiting for the astronauts to return to Earth. The family members and friends of the astronauts were watching this play out on TV together. Now the biggest question was, when this broken spacecraft enters the Earth's atmosphere, will the spacecraft be about to sustain the heat impact? Will the astronauts be able to survive? For this part, the astronauts had to return to the command module because only the command module was made for re-entry on the Earth. As soon as the command module entered the Earth's atmosphere, there was a communication blackout. This was normal because due to ionization of the air, the radio waves get blocked and communication cannot be done between the NASA employees present on the ground and the astronauts in the spacecraft. 
Usually this communication blackout is for two to three minutes. It was expected that the communication blackout here would be for a maximum of three minutes. Three minutes were over, but there was no answer from the other side. 10 seconds pass. 30 seconds. 60 seconds. Even after four minutes, there was no communication from the spacecraft. Could the astronauts survive or not? Four minutes and 27 seconds later, finally, communication was received from the other side. Hello, Houston. This is Odyssey. It's good to see you again. The people watching it on television could finally breathe again. All three astronauts survived. The parachute was deployed in the command module and it slowly fell into the Pacific Ocean. The three astronauts return home safe and sound. Although this mission failed, none of the three astronauts set foot on the moon. But still, this Apollo 13 mission made its mark on the pages of history, showing this historical rescue mission of the Apollo 13 and the bravery of the astronauts. Several books are written on it and films are made. After the investigation of this incident, many safety measures are adopted by NASA so that there could be no such accidents in future missions. After Apollo 13, Apollo 14, Apollo 15, Apollo 16 and Apollo 17, all these missions were successful. On the 7th of December 1972, Apollo 17 was the last mission by NASA under the Apollo program. The astronauts in this mission spent three days on the surface of the moon, and this was the last time till today when humans went to the moon. <laughs>